us about Lebanon's for the harvest. So if you are writing, say Lebanon for the harvest. Say Lebanon for the harvest. Stand to someone next to you and tell them for the harvest. Let us stand to the book of Matthew chapter number 9. From verse number 35. And the Bible says, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages. Teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every disease. And every affliction. The Bible says that Jesus went to different cities to different villages and I love this contest here when he talks about cities and, and villages activities it is talking about urban areas and even rural areas and I love this contest here when he talks about cities and villages he did not seclude any single area. He did not seclude any single area. But he was able to give out whatever that the Father desired for him to be able to give out to others. The Bible says he was teaching even in the synagogues. He was teaching even in the synagogues. Because the synagogues were there in existence even before Jesus was there. Even before Jesus was born. So Jesus is in, in his own all design was able to work even with the, with the authorities that were in existence at that time. And being full of the Holy Ghost, working under the grace of God. In other words, also in this context, we are able to learn that actually Jesus was able to acknowledge whatever that was being done in the synagogues. That's why he was able to associate with them in that manner. I know many people are able to talk about a lot of issues when it comes to the synagogues. But that is not where we are going to build our doctrine today. So the Bible says that Jesus was able to move and preach the gospel. When he talks about teaching in simple language, the Bible is saying Jesus was able to help people understand exactly what he had. For them. When we talk about teaching, we are talking about him making them to understand. And not just understanding in a shallow manner, but in a more deeper dimension. And the Bible says he was preaching the gospel or he was proclaiming the gospel. When we talk about proclaiming the gospel, we are talking about him presenting the good news to them. So Jesus was saying, I have good news for you, my people. And this is not just limited to the city people. I know many scholars normally say that John the Baptist used to preach in the villages and Jesus preached in the cities. So they normally say that Jesus was a city preacher and John the Baptist was a village preacher. But on this context here we get an aspect whereby Jesus was 
there for all of them. Lakini katika mkutano huu tunapata kwamba Yesu Kristo alikuwa kwa wao wote. And Jesus had a desire that each one of them will get the good news. Na Yesu Kristo alikuwa na hilo tamaa kwamba kila mmoja wao apate ile habari njema. And that good news is called the gospel. Na hiyo habari njema inaitwa injili. That's why we encourage those people normally say that they sing gospel songs they need to preach the good news because when you talk about the gospel you are talking about the good news because na inaweza wale watu ambao wanaiba injili wengi kwa za injili kwamba inasema kuwa wimbo imora injili and it is the good news of the kingdom ni habari njema ya ufalme it is the good news of royalty ni habari njema ya kifalme it is the good news of power ni habari njema ya kuwa because when you talk about the kingdom we are talking about royalty we are talking about power we are talking about wealth we are talking about prosperity we are talking about success maana tunapoongelea kuhusu habari njema ni kuhusu tunaongelea kuhusu nguvu tunaongelea kuhusu ile ufalme tunaongelea kuhusu ile mamlaka we are talking about a, a, a family that has a king tunaongelea kuhusu familia ambayo iko na mfalme and we are talking about a family that has kings in it tunaongelea kuhusu familia ambayo iko na wafalme we are talking about a family that has a princess and princes Peace and princes. We are talking about a family that is well protected, well taken care of. We are talking about a family that lacks nothing. We are talking about a family that lacks nothing. And that is the gospel that Jesus was preaching. And that is the gospel that Jesus was preaching. And many times we don't preach the, the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because many times we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because When you receive the good news from Jesus, also we need to know that He did not just bring the good news to us. But the Bible says also He came to heal every disease that we have. That's why you don't have to allow diseases to glorify itself in our bodies. That's why we normally encourage ourselves that never own a disease. That's why we normally encourage ourselves that never own a disease. Because as is what we are doing, we are going to stay in the community. You know there are people who normally say that this is my disease. Because in their minds they think that their diseases cannot be wiped away. But by limiting Jesus in that kind of manner, now they will never receive the healing in the police. Na kwa kuweza kupunguza Kristo katika haina hiyo ya tabia basi hajaweza kupokea uponyaji katika bili yao. That's why we know supposed to live with Jesus in any way whatsoever. Because I'm trying to kupunguza Kristo katika njia iwara yote ile. We need to understand that we are preaching the gospel that carries power with it. Na hivyo tunasaidi kufahamu kwamba tunahubiri Even if that disease has taken long to leave your body, it must live because Jesus is able to heal. Hata kama ugonjwa huo umechukua muda mwingi kuishi katika mwili wako na sahihi kutoka. And the Bible says also he was able to heal even every affliction that was there. Hata Biblia inasema kwamba aliweza hata kuponya mateso yote ambayo yalikuwa hapo. And another verse says it was every Jesus was able to heal every sickness that was there. When we talk about every affliction, we are talking about every every challenge that those people were encountering in those villages and even those cities. And we see that those who are suffering from these afflictions are not just people who are suffering from these afflictions. So every challenge that was in existence at that specific time, Jesus was able to provide a solution for them. We see that every challenge that was in existence at that specific time, Jesus was able to provide a solution. So when we talk about the Jesus that we are serving, we are talking about Jesus who has power. 
Kwa hivyo tunapoongelea kuhusu Yesu Kristo ambaye tunamtumikia tunamtuendaongelea kuhusu Kristo ambaye ako na nguvu. The one that is able to heal every disease and the one that is able to provide solutions for every child that we normally encounter in our daily life. Yeye ambaye anaweza kuponya kila magonjwa na kuweza kuleta suluhu katika changamoto ambayo tunapitana nayo katika maisha. And I decided to go this God so that you can able to understand the one that we are associating yourself with. Kwa hivyo niliweza kuenda katika mkutano huu ili tuka so that you cannot just think that Jesus is not able. Because the way you understand him, the way you know him, it is the way you will respond to him. So if you know that you are God, you are Jesus is able, then he becomes able to you. So if you know that you are God, you are Jesus is able, then he becomes able to you. So if you know that you are God, you are Jesus is able, then he becomes able to you. That's why in our foundational principle in the book of First Peter chapter two verses nine, we are talking about the people that declare the praises of Him in the land. Kwa katika ile ile neno la msingi katika ndiko letu katika kitabu cha Petero inasema kwamba tunatangaza yule ambaye ni mwenye nguvu katika nchi. So turn to someone next to you and tell them Jesus has a solution for every challenge that you are undergoing. Basi geukia mtu aliye karibu na yeye kwamba kwamba Yesu Kristo yuko na suluhu ya kila hali ambayo unapitia katika maisha. Even every disease that you've ever had of Jesus has a solution. Hata magonjwa ambayo hujawahi kusikia Yesu yuko na suluhu. And I'm talking about this so that we can be able to represent Jesus in great power. Nina ongelea kuhui kuhusu hii ili kaweze kumwasilisha Kristo katika ile nguvu. And even as we serve Jesus we can be able to understand which kind of heart did Jesus have. Hata unapotumikia Mungu unaweza kujua ni haina nani ya nguvu ambayo Kristo yako nayo. Because all of us need to live a Christ like life. Kwa sababu sisi sote tunasaidi kuishi maisha kama ya Kristo. Verse number 36 the Bible says when he saw the crowds or when he saw the multitudes. Mstari wa 36 unasema kwamba Verse 36 it says when he saw the multitudes or when he saw the crowds Alipotazama umati you can just sit up with the lady Alipotazama umati he 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 had compassion on them aliweza kuwahurumia or he was moved with compassion aliweza kuona huruma and the bible says because they were harassed and helpless ni kwa sababu walikuwa hawana msaada wote ule like sheep without a shepherd kama kondoo pasipo mchungaji. Then Jesus said to his disciples. Alafu Yesu Kristo akaweza kuambia wanafunzi wake. Behold the harvest is plenty. Tazama mavuno ni mengi. But the laborers are very few. Lakini watenda kazi ni wachache. Therefore pray earnestly to the Father. Kwa hivyo muombeni Baba to the Lord Bwana of the harvest of mavuno so that he can be able to send out laborers ili kwamba akaweze kuwatuma watenda kazi. There are few principles that I want us or there are few points that I want us to get in this contest here. Kuna kanuni ambazo tungeweza tukaweza kupata katika mkutano huu. The Bible says that Jesus went out there to preach the good news. Ndiyo anasema kwamba Yesu Kristo alienda pale kuhubiri habari njema. And me and you we believe that we are representative of Jesus. Na mimi na wewe wadhani kwamba sisi ni wakilishi wa Kristo. So number one Kwanza, we need to go out and preach the good news. Na saidi kuenda nje na kuweza kuhubiri habari njema. Or tell others about the good news. Ama kuweza kuambia wengine kuhusu habari njema. And not say including any specific place but anywhere that you can be able to access, go out there and share the good news with other people. Bila kutenga maana popote, enda pale nje na kushiriki habari njema na watu. Number two, we need to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. Pili tunasaidi kutangaza injili ya ufalme. Ama katika njia rais. That good news that you are proclaiming the kingdom of God must be involved. Hiyo habari njema unayotangaza ufalme wa Mungu unasaidi kuhusishwa. And the Bible says healing every disease. Na Biblia inasema kwamba ukiponya kila magonjwa. And remember when we accepted Jesus 
Kumbuka kwamba tulipo kukubali Kama tulipo kukubali kuwa wanawani The Bible says that those who are given power The gift of power Pia Biblia nasema kwamba tuliweza kuwa kupewa mbufu ama mamlaka And that power is able to heal Na hiyo mamlaka inaweza kuponya That power is able to command everything Hiyo mbufu inaweza kuwa mburu kila kitu So number two when you talk about the gospel the kingdom must become a reality. And if there is any sickness out there, you are able to heal. Because Jesus said, Go heal. And you are able to heal. And you are able to heal. When you say, Go and heal, every disease is healed. In simple language, you say, I have given you power to go and heal. That's why one person told me to pray for them. I told them I will not pray. It is already done. And you know what God was able to do it? Because at that juncture when I was told to pray for that specific need, I remember the power that I was given when I became a son. I became a son. And because I activated the power in me, God was able to follow that power and was able to give results. To that nature. And this is an area that I've tried to exercise every single day of my life. So Jesus was able to heal diseases. That's why we don't have to glorify any disease. It does not matter the kind of name that is given by the doctors or even the, the people that discovered it. But when you are alive, the name that you are given to you is given to you. But when you are alive, the name that you are given to you is given to you. You can command that disease to leave your body and even leave other people's bodies. Why? Because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because our bodies are the temple. Why? Because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And every affliction, every challenge, we must be able to bring solutions, or be able to demonstrate solutions to every challenges that are out there. But at the same time, also you need to understand that that power has been given to you, so you can be able to solve even your own challenges by that power. Hata pia ukaweza kufahamu kama hiyo nguvu unaweza kupewa wewe ukaweza kutenda hayo yote. And the Bible says not just limited in that angle. Na Biblia inasema sio tu kupungukiwa katika kiwango. But the Bible says that Jesus saw great multitudes. Lakini Biblia inasema kwamba Kristo aliweza kuona umati mkuu. So he was bring to our senses by the power of the Holy Ghost. So every single time remember that you have Jesus with you. Oivo kila wakati ukaweza kukumbuka kwamba uko pamoja na Kristo. And you have Jesus with you. Wewe uko na Kristo. And the Bible says. Na Biblia inasema he was moved with compassion. Ya kwamba aliweza kuonea huruma. He was moved by compassion. Kuonea huruma. Number one he saw great multitudes. He saw a larger group. He saw a lot of people. He saw a lot of people. And when he looked at them, he saw their needs. How many of us do we look up to other people and you see their needs? Have you ever lifted your eyes and looked at your neighbors and asked what are their needs? Have you ever looked at your, your schoolmates and thought, what are their needs? What might be their needs? Have you ever looked at your family members and thought, what might be the needs of my family members? 
Normally just look up to them and say these people are very many, but you don't look it deeply into their needs. How many times do we remember to look into their needs? The Bible says that we need to look into their needs. Yes, and we need to look into their needs. The Bible says Jesus looked to them. And he saw their needs. And because he saw their needs, he was able to look into their needs. And because also he had a human heart and a fatherly heart. Yes, and because also he had a human heart and a fatherly heart. Yes, and because also he had a human heart and a fatherly heart. Yes, and because also he had a human heart and a fatherly heart. He was moved with compassion. He was able to sympathize for their sake. Because he looked at them and he discovered that they are very much harassed. And he called an understanding that these people are helpless. They have nobody to help them. How many times have you ever looked to other people? And you find that people are being harassed. And you see that people are being harassed. You looked at them and you discovered that the devil is taking advantage of them. How many? Did you, how many times have you ever discovered that most of them are looking like I are walking like mad people? Because they know where they need it to. Do we normally look at their needs? Do we normally look at that? Do we normally feel pain on their behalf? Have you ever looked at a sinful person? Maybe that guy, that guy gentleman going out for clubbing. Or maybe that neighbor who is doing sinful things. Have you ever thought of their needs? Have you ever thought of their needs? Have you ever thought about their future? Do you have any plans in the future? Do you have any plans in the future? Do you have any plans in the future? Remember that the devil is taking advantage of them. Have you ever remembered that their life is not lonely? Have you ever understood that you got eternal life with you? Have you ever understood that you have eternal life with you? But for them, they are dominated with the power of death. Have you ever sympathized with them? Have you ever been able to sympathize with them? Have you ever been able to sympathize with them? Have you ever been able to sympathize with them? Have you ever been able to sympathize with them? Have you ever been able to sympathize with them? Have you ever thought of their future? Have you ever thought where they headed to? Have you ever thought their end result? Have you ever thought of what they are going to reap at the end of it? Have you ever thought about that? What did you do? Have you ever thought of what they are going to reap at the end of it? Have you ever thought of what they are going to reap at the end of it? Have you ever thought about that? What did you do? with compassion. Have you ever asked who is their shepherd? Have you ever asked who is taking care of these people? Because when you talk about a shepherd, you are talking about someone who is taking care of the sheep. And every shepherd, every good shepherd, the Bible says you must have a role. And when you have that role, that role is not to kill the sheep. But it is there to protect the sheep. And when you have that role, that role is not to kill the sheep. But it is there to protect the sheep. Have you ever asked who is the shepherd of your neighbor? Have you ever asked yourself who is the shepherd of your relatives that do not know God? Have you ever asked yourself who is the shepherd of your relatives that do not know God? When you talk about a shepherd, you are talking about a pastor. When you talk about a pastor, we are talking about pasture. And every good pastor must provide pasture for the sheep. And the greatest shepherd of the church is Jesus Christ. Some of us are just there to represent the office of Jesus. But we 
kuwakilisha afisi ya Lakini yeye ndiye mchungaji wetu. Yeye ndiye eh, mchungaji wetu. When we need food we go to Jesus. Na kwa ichaji chakula basi tunaenda kwa Kristo. When we need protection we go to Jesus. Na kwa ichaji ulizi tunaenda kwa Kristo. And because we have submitted ourselves under his lordship he is our shepherd. Lakini kwa sababu tumeji tumejiweka chini ya ubwana wake basi yeye ni mchungaji wetu. We cannot die because of kwashoko spiritual kwashoko. Hatuwezi kufa kwa sababu ya kwashoko ya kiroho. We cannot become an healthy because we have enough food from our shepherd. Hatuwezi kukosa ile afya kwa sababu tuko na chakula cha kutosha kutoka kwa mchungaji wetu. Because the same is say Jesus Christ is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Mwana mwandishi wa Zaburi akasema kwamba Bwana ni mchungaji wangu. And because he is my shepherd I shall not want. Kwa sababu yeye mchungaji wangu basi sitapungukiwa. So those people who are out there. Wewe wale watu ambao wako pale nje. Who is their shepherd? Je, ni nani mchungaji wako? Are you moved with compassion that they have no security about their life? Je, umeonea huruma kwamba hawana usalama maishani mwao? compassion that they have no future for themselves. Have you ever thought of them that the enemy is taking advantage of them simply because he wants to steal from them? He wants to kill them and he wants to destroy them. Juu yao kwa sababu anataka kuwaua kwa sababu anataka kuwaibia. Can we be moved with compassion and reach out to them? Je, tunaweza kusongeshwa na huruma na kuweza kuwafikia? So that we can make them sit under the shepherd, the self shepherd, shepherd of the Lord Jesus. Ili kwamba wakaweze kuketi chini ya uchungaji ulio salama wa Kristo. So that it can be well with them. Ili kwamba ikaweze kuwa vema nao. So that they can experience the blessings that makes one rich and there are no sorrows. Ili kwamba wakaweze kupata ile Dema na ifanya mtu kuwa tajiri bwana sio kwenye mwenye kujuta. So that they can wait patiently under the blessings and the security of the Lord Jesus. Ili wakaweze kuongojea chini ya usalama wa Kristo. So they we need to be moved with compassion and reach out to others. We need to be moved with compassion and reach out to others. And this kind of burning must be within our hearts. Because the church of God is not growing anymore. Men and women of God are not representing God the way he desires. Ministers of the gospel like myself, we are not reaching out to people the way God desires. We are just out there in our comfort zone. We are just out there in our comfort zone. We are just out there. We are just out there doing what we desire to do for ourselves. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion. But we lack a people that are moved by compassion.